Okay, so I'll show you what I've been up to. Now, you saw in my last penny plane uh, video, I was playing around with biplanes, <clears throat> a penny plane biplane. So what I did this summer, I, was, I designed one here, and uh, here it is. We're gonna give this a shot this fall. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you'll notice a couple little things that are different. <clears throat> so instead of the rounded tips, which I, I like, and they're nice and strong, here I tried tip plates, okay? And I've been reading up a little bit about tip plates and tip winglets, these are a little different, and so on, and its effects on drag, and that's kind of what motivated me here. <clears throat> so, just to give you an idea, uh, at, you know, when it's flying, obviously the wind, air is going over the top a little bit faster than under the bottom, and so there's some upwards pressure. Now you gotta realize that this, there's pressure here, but when you get to this, pretend this wasn't there, it's going to go this way. The air is going to go up because there's that upward pressure, okay? The other thing you got to realize is it's going to go up and it's going back because the plane is moving forward. So it's going to go up and it's going back and then there's air coming here off the wing. It's going to hit that and actually make it curl under and you can see you're going to get a vortex and you can see that's the way it's going to go, okay? For this reason, the air is coming up, it's coming here. The reason it curves under is it hits the air and like that. Now, some people had illustrations where they had very tight little <clears throat> vortexes coming off the tips, but that's not correct. It's actually bigger, all right? It's like a little vortex like this. So now you can get the idea of the tip plate. So the idea is here, this air is coming up, it's gonna hit this, and it's gonna come up here, and so you'll get the vortex will be moved up here, you see? And also, hopefully, it's, it'll be smaller as well. That's kind of the idea. Now, if you have a smaller vortex, that means you have less drag, right? So you have, in essence, more lift. And this is the whole point, okay? Now, the other thing about the tip plates is that this is, so there's really three things, several things you're accomplishing. One is, <clears throat> penny plane has an 18 inch wing limit, okay? And so this way you can make the whole center section of the wing, it's just flat. I got the maximum area possible this way, all right? It's just flat. So that's one thing. With the tip plates, you don't need dihedral. Okay, and the other thing is to try to move the vortex up as I just explained. All right, now I also did it on the stab because that way I can get rid of the rudder. I'm trying to save a little weight. <clears throat> this stab was actually 200 milligrams lighter than my last stab, and I saved another 100 milligrams or so from the rudder. Okay, uh, you can see I have the carbon fiber. I like these, they're low drag and they're incredibly strong. This is a variable pitch prop, so it's a little heavier. Uh, than most. I noticed if it wasn't VP, it'd probably be around 0.4 grams, but since it's VP, it's around 0.8. Now, the total weight of the plane without the prop was 2.8 grams. That's not bad, because if I had the 4.4 gram, it'd be up to 3.2. And I noticed for all the biplane, penny planes, they usually weigh between 3.3 and 3.5. You don't want to go too much on the wing. There's not much more. I, I can do a little bit. I can use a little thinner rib little lighter ribs, and I'm gonna uh, decrease the number of ribs, so that'll save a little weight. Now, one thing that's different about this one is for the fuselage, I did it on a quarter inch last time. Well, this time I did it on 930 seconds, <clears throat> and that's because the other one was bending a lot, even with the uh, you know tungsten bracing, it was still bending too much. Boy, I noticed a big difference. This one is much, much stiffer. Just that little increase makes a big difference. Um, which is good, but of course it's also a little heavier. That was the problem. So uh, I, you can maybe, you can, yeah, you can see it there. It does have tungsten. <clears throat> this time I put a single tungsten bracing. You can see there's the post. You probably can't see the tungsten. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it's a variable pitch prop as before. You can see I've got that nicely balanced. You know, I just gave, oh, and let's see. So the total with the heavier prop is about 3.5, 3.6 grams. Not too bad. I was hoping to get a little lighter. Uh, I could probably lighten the wing a little bit more, but I'm not gonna go too nuts on that. You need a strong structure. Now, I just gave it the little bedroom test flight. It was beautiful. I, mean, I just put on 600 turns. I let it go and I could see it was stable, the climbing and the turn looked nice. Uh, just from letting it go a few feet a few times, I can see that. So I'm really looking forward to flying this, okay? So the season starts again in a few more weeks at uh, T-neck. So I'll let you know. I'll, we'll see how it goes. Really looking forward to it. All right, here we are in the armory. First day of flying. 
Here's my new penny plane. Okay, we're gonna see what this does. And then I also have the fulcrets here as well. We'll give that a shot. There's my winder and torque meter. All right. All right, here's Tom's. He's got a limited penny plane. You can see we're all thinking about the tips, so he's got pretty big tips. It'll be interesting to see how this flies. Here we are, Tom and I. Here's me in the background, here's Tom. Here we go. Penny plane heaven. Very nice. It's really humid in here, we're having problems climbing. Yeah, you didn't get uh, get anywhere near like you did last time. Okay, we're back. So I've had about three flying sessions with it. And you know, it's okay, it flies nice. I mean, I'm up around the 10 minute range, but I did 12 minutes with the monoplane. So it, it you know, I, I wasn't, well, I was a little disappointed, I guess. Uh, so I didn't see really any evidence of great lift or much more lift, but the confound is that it's heavier. It weighs 3.6 grams instead of the 3.1. In contrast to my monoplane, which was underweight and actually had to add weight to get it to 3.1 grams. Okay, so I think the next step is to lighten it up and I've been thinking about that and that made me think about the design a little bit. Now, I think the, whoops, I think the tip plates are fine for limited penny plane because you can only have a five by 18 wing and this way you get the maximum wing area. But the bad thing about uh, that is that, well, let me say this, also on the stab, it's not as important because from the constant margin of stability calculations, you don't have to worry about getting enough area on the stab. That's not really the issue. So one of the first things I was thinking of is why not go back to the elliptical stabs, which is what I always use. Now, I should point out in that in terms of wing shapes, uh, you can show that the rectangular wing has the most induced drag, okay? And the elliptical wing actually has the least induced drag. Now, it's a little complicated, and, and I'm not sure I fully understand it, but from my understanding, the with the elliptical wing, the lift is spread more evenly around the surface and that reduces the induced drag. That, that's my understanding. Okay, so once I started thinking along these lines, I thought, you know what, I think I'm just gonna go back to my usual elliptical stab uh, because this is heavier and I'm not sure you're really getting any benefit. Now, as I kept thinking about that, I thought, you know, Maybe I should do that with the wing too. So the jury's kind of out on the tip plates. I thought, all right, maybe I'll, this is unlimited. Now, if it was limited penny plane, you couldn't do this because you could only do five by 18. But this is unlimited, so I can make it as wide as I want. So that's what I did. I designed another one. It's gonna have the elliptical stab. And what I did is I made the wing is wider because it's an ellipse, and I made it so it has the same area. So I still have the same area as you have here. So this will be a nice, comparison. I'm curious. Uh, the elliptical shape supposedly has the least amount of induced drag. And uh, so, I, you know, and the old microfilm flyers used to use elliptical wings all the time. So I'm sure they, they knew what was going on there. So I rebuilt it and uh, I'll show you that one. Okay, so here's my elliptical penny plane. All right, I went all out this time to try to lighten it up. Uh, for example, on the prop outlined, I used a 32nd this time instead of a 20th. On the wings, I had seven ribs. I reduced it to five, and I also lightened up the structure a little bit. I've been flying penny planes, so I have an idea what I could get away with. Same thing on the stab again, very few ribs, and uh, lightened it up a little bit. I like the elliptical uh, shape because it really gives you strength. And then you can see I also got rid of the rudder on the stab, or the fin, and I just uh, used a dihedral in the wingtips instead. I'm sure that'll work fine, all right? The fuselage is a little smaller again, like my original. I rolled it on a quarter inch too, but it had some paper on it, so it's about 9.30 seconds. And then I still have the same carbon fiber tubes, those I like, the .038, those are really strong and nice. 
Okay, and I think that's everything. So, in uh, you know, each one of those changes lightened up. The stab was over 100 milligrams lighter. The prop was. I was hoping to get down more towards the uh, minimum weight, and I was excited to find out I actually went under it. It's less than 3.1 grams. So the last one was 3.6, which is kind of heavy. This one is 3.06 grams, so it's very light. I could just tell by handling it that it's lighter. So I'm really happy with this because that's getting to the minimum weight. I have a little heavier prop I can put on if I need to get it up to the 3.1 grams, okay? So I'm really looking forward to giving this a shot. Uh, you know, it's well known in aerodynamics that the elliptical wing shape is the, has the least amount of induced drag, whereas the rectangular has the most. So I'm curious to see how this flies. Um, I gave it a little try in the bedroom. It went right up. It looked pretty nice to me, okay? I have to confess, I always like the elliptical shape uh, the most anyway. It just looks nice. And I think it's gonna look nice in the air. So we're gonna get out and fly it this week and see how that goes. Okay, so let me give you a little update. Uh, this video has been in the works here for months. I'm sorry for the length of it, but I've been doing a lot of experimenting. So now we're at the end of December. I took out the elliptical several times. Now, the first time I realized right away the stab was too small. I could tell from the way it was flying. So I built a larger stab and, you know, I'm taking it easy here because I'm trying to save weight. Um, then I went out a uh, again, well, actually, I flew my F1 off for a few months, and, and then I eventually went out with the larger stab last week, actually, and I could tell it still wasn't large enough, okay? Um, and from the CMOS calculations, you can tell you really, really need a pretty big stab. You can see the wing post is still pretty far back. So I built another stab, and this time what I did is I just used the wing for the stab, all right? I now I made the dihedral is a little bit in closer and I, I moved the ribs a little bit. So it actually has a little less area. Uh, it's about 45% of the total wing area. But, you know, I think this is as far as I can go and I think this will correct the problem. It, it flew better with the last time I enlarged this there, but it still wasn't, you know, uh, sufficient. So we're gonna get out. Uh, we have to wait until after New Year's. We can't fly in that week between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, I, I tried this in the bedroom and it looked pretty good. I thought it went up nice and it looked fairly stable. So hopefully I've solved those problems. Uh, the other thing I was happy about is this was very light before. Now the total weight here, it is completely rebuilt, is uh, 3.16 grams. And 3.1 is the minimum. So I'm very happy. I think this is very good for a biplane, all right? So I'll see you out in Teaneck and let's see how this works. Oh, well, here we go. So this is the new stab and it took off this time. I'm surprised. Well, that's a VP prop. So I don't know when the VP is going to uh, kick in. I'm surprised it got up this high. I really didn't wind it very much. I think these elliptical wings have more lift. Uh, but let's see what happens. And this prop's a little messed up. Well, that bigger stab definitely did the trick. Okay, so you just saw my elliptical biplane flying. All right, and you know, it was okay. But again, I think the elliptical wings have more lift and I kind of started to have those problems with CMOS again when you have too much area. So what I ended up doing for this year is I went back to the monoplane. This is one of my elliptical wings and I just threw on a stab and rudder I had sitting around and I'll tell you the last time out this already did 12 minutes. But the point is, so did my other monoplane and, and so on. So I'm gonna redesign the uh, the, I already did, I redesigned the biplane. So it's a, a narrower wing. It's only five by 18 instead of this one, which is like six by 18, okay? And I think that'll work as a biplane. I also have, I'm gonna fool around with the stab a little bit. I'll show you what I'm up to there. All right, so that's it for the, I can't believe how many different penny planes I built this year. I did an eight inch and then I did a six inch. Then I did two six inch wings. I did two five inch wings. I did a uh, five inch with the uh, uh, tiplets. And uh, then I did the ellipticals. Okay, so it was an interesting year. 
and uh, I'll, we'll pick it up next year. I'm going to do the biplane. Right now I'm going to do a limited penny plane and I'll show you a video on that. Here's my elliptical monoplane. Boy, it's flying really nice. I'm really happy. Okay. And uh, I turned the pitch way up and it's still climbing. So I think it looks good. Let's see what happens this time. So this was the biplane. I just got rid of a wing and I put on a big stab I had sitting around. And it just flies really nice. I think these elliptical wings are really, really nice. All right, well, let's see. I'm gonna get the pole, it's still going up. Hopefully not too much.